This is a poem by Deborah Diggs. It's called Broom. More than my 16 rented houses and their 80 or so rooms, held up by stone or cinder block foundations, most facing north with useless basements, wrought iron fences to the curb, beat up black mailboxes, eagles impaled through breasts to edifice, or set like lighthouses some distance from the stoop a thousand miles inland, or close enough to see the seagulls settled mornings in the playing fields I passed on this continent and others, as I walked my sons to school or to the train. More than the kitchen door frames where is carved the progress of their growth, one than the other on his birthday backed against the wall almost on tiptoe. And more than the ruler I have laid across their skulls where the older's brown hair like my own or the younger's blonde like his father's covered abundantly what was once only a swatch of scalp. I touch as they slept to know their hearts beat. More than the height at which, and in this house, the marking stopped like stairs leading to ground level, and they walked out into the world, dog no doubt by the ghost of the man, their father, and the men who tried to be their fathers, father their wildness. And more even than the high-sashed windows and windows sliding sideways through which I watched for them, sometimes squinting, sometimes through my hands cupped on cold glass, trying to see in the dark my men approaching, my breath blinding me. The firstborn, surely the man I would have married. The second, me in his man's body. More than the locks left open, and the creaking steps, and the books left open like mirrors on the floor, and the sinks where we washed our faces, and the beds above which our threefold dreams collided. I have loved the broom I took into my hands, and crossed the threshold to begin again, whose straw I wore to nothing, whose shaft I could use to straighten a tree or break across my knee to kindle the first winter fire, or used to stir the fire. Broom, whose stave is pine or hickory, and whose skirt of birch spray and heather offers itself up as nest matter, arcs like the equator in the corner, could we see far enough, or is parted one way like my hair? Once I asked myself, when was I happy? I was looking at a February sky. When did the light hold me, and I didn't struggle? And it came to me, an image of myself in a doorway, a broom in my hand, sweeping out beach sand, salt, soot, pollen, and pine needles, the last December leaves and mud wasps, moths, flies crushed to wafers, and spring's first seed husks, and then the final tufts like down and red bud petals, like autumn leaves, so many petals. Sweeping out the soil the boys tracked in from burying a new yard in the new yard another animal. Broom leaving intact the spider's webs. Careful of those and careful when I danced with the broom that no one was watching. And when I hacked at the floor with the broom like an axe, jammed handle through glass as if the house were burning and I must abandon ship as I wept over a man's faithlessness. Or wept over my own. And so the broom became an oar that parted waters, raft keel and mast, or twirled around and around in the back lawn. A sort of compass through whose blurred counter motion the woods became a gathering of brooms, onlooking or ancestral. I thought I could grow old here, safe among the ghosts, each welcomed, yes, welcome back for once into this house, these rooms in which I have got down on my hands and knees and swept my hair across my two sons' broad, tan backs, and swept my hair across you, swinging my head, lost in the motion, lost swaying up and down the whole length of your body, my hair tangling in your hair, our hair matted with sweat and my own cum and semen, lost, swaying, smelling you, smelling you humming, gone in the motion, back and forth, sweeping. <laughs>